hello guys welcome back to my channel today we'll be talking about what is called conditional probability now this is a likelihood or chance that an event will occur provided that another event had already occurred symbolically we write this as the probability that event a occurs given that event b had already occurred so this slash that i have between a and b means given that let us work out the rule for this, employing the use of a Venn diagram. All right? So let's say we had a Venn diagram where we had events A and B. So I have my Venn diagram. We all know the number of elements in the sample space. Or the, we'll talk about the probability of the sample space, which is equal to 1. This is event A. And this is event b now if i ask you what is the probability that a will occur given that b had already occurred now the fact that b had already occurred this automatically makes b my new sample space so technically speaking my focus here is on b this section here now the question is what is the probability that a will occur given that b had already occurred and bear in mind we just said the fact that b had occurred we're using b as our new sample space now going back to my venn diagram we have a small part of a that falls in b i'm going to shade it right here and this part is the intersection this part refers to a and b so what is the probability that a will occur given that b had already occurred i'm looking at this part here which is inside of b considering the fact that b is my new sample space so technically speaking i could say that this come down to the number of elements in a and b because that is the section in green there a and b over the number of elements in b now we can modify this formula to get the probability on both sides by simply taking the right hand side and we could simply divide both the numerator and the denominator by the number of elements in my sample space. So this would imply that the probability of A given B is equal to the number of elements in A and B over the number in my sample space all over the number of elements in B over the number of elements in my sample space. Now once I divide by my sample space, it now automatically becomes a probability. So right here we could actually say that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B all over the probability of B. Here's an example of a typical question. A math teacher gave her class two tests. 42% of the class passed the first test, while 25% passed both tests. What percentage of those who passed the first test also passed the second test? So we're gonna we're gonna start by defining our events. So probably A could be the event passing the first test. And B is the event passing second test. Now, since we're dealing with probability, we're going to convert our percentage in this scenario to decimal. So, 42%, you know, is going to be 0 0.42, and 25% is going to be 0 0.25. Now, let us focus on the question what percentage of those who pass the first test also pass the second test? So, what is this really saying? This is saying we want the probability that you pass the second test, which is B, given that you already passed the first test, which is A. All right? So, for you to be considered, you must have passed the first test. Now, the probability of B given A would be equal to the probability of B and A over the probability of a and of course we know this because 
A becomes a new sample space because it says given that you had passed the first test. Now the probability of A and B, we're told by the question that 25% of the students pass both tests. So the probability of A and B is 25%, which when we convert that to decimal, we get 0 0.25. The probability that you pass the first test, which is event A, is for, well, it is 42%, which means it's going to be 0 0.42. So it will be 0 0.25 over 0 0.42. Now when I break this down, it is going to give me 0 0.595. And bear in mind what the question asks, what percentage? So I'm going to have to convert this to percentage which is going to give me 59.5%. And probably, I could probably round it off to the nearest 10, which would be approximately 60%. But we could leave it like this. So we are saying that 59.5% of the persons who pass the first test also pass the second test. This is example two. X and Y are two events such that the probability of X given Y is equal to 0 0.4. The probability of Y is equal to 0 0.25. And the probability of X is equal to 0 0.2. And my first question is to find the probability of X and Y. Now, when doing a probability question, all we have to do is examine the information that we have. We have the probability of X given Y. And we know the formula for that connects to the probability of x and y. So I could start by saying that the probability of x given y is equal to the probability of x and y over the probability of y. Now the probability of x given y here is 0 0.4. This is equal to the probability of x and y over the probability of y, which I also know to be 0 0.25. So, in order to get the probability of x and y, what we simply need to do is to transpose this equation. So, we could actually say here, so here we could say 0 0.4 times 0 0.25 is equal to the probability of x and y. When I work this out, I'm going to get 0 0.1. So therefore, the probability of x and y is equal to 0 0.1. Now, these are all the components I have. And my next task is to find the probability of x or y. Now, we know the formula for the probability of x or y, which I would have done in my previous videos. That says that this is equal to the probability of x plus the probability of y minus the probability of x and y. We know the probability of x. And in this question, it is equal to 0 0.2. The probability of y is equal to 0 0.25. And the probability of x and y is equal to 0 0.1. Now, when you plug all this inside of your calculator, it actually turns out to be 0 0.1. 0.35. Now guys, we're going to manipulate the formula for conditional probability to show you how many things we could actually do with it. Now we know the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. We could also say that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B, we could say B and A, A and B, but it means the same thing because that is commutative there, over the probability of A. Now these two formulas have something in common. They have the probability of A and B. So let me call this equation 1. Let me call this equation 2. So from equation 1, I could say that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A given B times the probability of B. From equation 2, I could say that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability 
of A, which means that these two formulas must be equal because I have the probability of A and B to be the subject in both scenarios. So I could use the equating method here to say that this implies that the probability of A given B times the probability of B is actually equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A. Now a scenario might come up where I might need to draw on this formula here to actually solve an equation. So it's important that we know how to modify and manipulate these formulas. What we also want to tie into this video, this video is how we connect conditional probability with independent events. So let me start off with the conditional probability. We know that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Now, from my previous video, I spoke about independent events, which is that if A and B are independent, so if A and B are independent, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So let us put this into this formula. So if I replace the probability of A and B by the probability of A times the probability of B, this is what is going to happen. I'm going to have the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B all over the probability of B. Now, look at what is going to happen here. I can use the method of reduction. So the a probability of A will take out the probability of A. So I'm going to end up with the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. And this makes a whole lot of sense. If A is independent of B, then the probability that A will occur, given that B had already occurred, will still be equal to the probability of A. Because it's independent, it is not affected by it. We could also make a deduction that the probability of B, given the pro, well, the probability that B occurs, given that A had already occurred, would be equal to the probability of B. And of course, this only happens if the events are independent. In no other scenario will it happen. 